Good evening, good evening, good evening again, folks. Welcome to another episode of Spilling Tea. I'm your host, Tiffany Daniels. And we are going to that horrible world known as the JRC. But before we do the usual disclaimers, folks, if you are unfamiliar with the Stop the Shock campaign or the troubled teen industry, please make sure to go up into the description box. We have all the pertinent links to get you all caught up on both campaigns. One note I want you to look at in particular is an article written by Neuroclastic, a small non-for-profit started by Autistics for Autistics, wherein they interviewed and surveyed over 900 ABA professionals in regards to the JRC's so-called behavior modification program. The JRC, the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center, feels so threatened by this particular article that they threatened Neuroclastic with a defamation lawsuit if they did not remove it from the website. Neuroclastic has refused, so folks, please read that article and get it on all your social media. You're going to see Neuroclastic's public statement regards to that defamation lawsuit threat, as well as a link to their GoFundMe, for we are crowdfunding in case the JRC sees through with their threat. Trigger warning. We need... When we discuss places like Agape Boarding School for Boys or the Judge Rotenberg Educational Center, you're going to hear vivid descriptions of and catch clips of surveillance footage of people with disabilities being and mental health issues being tortured, abused. If you got young children present, please use your headphones, all right? This channel is marked not for kids for a reason. We use profanity on occasion and we do speak on dark subjects. So if your child is 16 and younger and they are watching this, very obviously, folks, parental supervision is very much devised here, okay? All right, where we left off in the middle of a paragraph, so sorry about that. Some autistic people who have been through strict behavioral modification as children experience post-traumatic stress. Many doctors and professionals such as Stock present ABA to parents as a necessary early intervention, claiming they will miss a crucial window of opportunity if they don't. Okay, let me speak to this in particular, because this was shoved down my throat too when I worked for the state. And not knowing better, I just bought it hook, line, and sinker and kept sailing to everybody else. Early intervention as humanly possible, not really knowing exactly what it was I was advocating for. I toted the party lines without knowing the details. Okay? I was young, stupid, naive, and I trusted people. You want to know why I'm so jaded these days? Think on that, right? I didn't understand exactly what it was that ABA was supposed to do in reality, as opposed to the selling point. Well, it will help them be able to get a job and make friends and be more socially acceptable. No, it's not. But they won't tell you that, though, now will they? They will just push ABA down parents' throats from day one. And unfortunately, we live in a society in the world that has pushed the doctor is always right so many times that even though a person who has actually been through ABA is trying to tell you what ABA is all about, you push them off because they're not doctors. It's almost a quasi-religious belief, if you will. I need you folks to wake up. Because there is a psychological toll when it comes to using a therapy that is trying to shove you, a typical brain, into a round peg into the square hole that is neurotypicality. Blah. You know where I was going. Okay. There's a toll. And you, the parents, aren't paying it. We are. But let's move on, shall we? 
The provincial government provides caregivers of autistic children under $622,000 annually for services, which amounts to a total of around $75 million. Remember that we always say, follow the money? Follow the money, folks. Okay? This is a multi-billion dollar industry all over the world. Okay? It's almost the scam, the end-all scams. In order for a service to be subsidized, it must be on the Registry of Autism Service Providers, RASP. The RASP includes occupational therapy, speech language pathology, physiotherapy, and behavioral intervention. ABA practitioners almost entirely deliver these behavioral services. According to the stock and effort, there is a 100% employment rate for ABA therapists after graduation. The sheer demand and capital generated by ABA practitioners means the industry holds down a lot of influence despite less expensive and augurly more humane forms of intervention. So think about it, folks. Why is the medical model pushing ABA when the medical model is well aware that literally on a physical level, our brains are not the same as yours? And that there's no real way to shrink the slightly enlarged brain of an autistic to make us neurotypical. It's never going to happen. Okay? We good on that? Good. So essentially, ABA causes us basically a whole lifetime of trauma and no little amount of self-hatred. Because it's teaching your kid from day one that they as they are is not good enough and that in order to deserve the same things given to neurotypical kids for free we have to pretend that like performing seals and hit all these bizarre neurotypical markers because otherwise we don't deserve to get treated like we're human it's essentially what it breaks down to okay I'm using this type of strong language because I need you to get the point. All right. These folks know damn good and well that using behavior modification techniques is not going to magically turn one of us neurotypical. Okay. But they sell you that pie in the sky crap because it generates billions every year. All right. And remember, when it comes to these treatments and you have these people tiding these high success numbers, remember how that success is measured. Is the person acting more neurotypical? If the answer is yes, they consider that an, a success. They do not care the price of the person that actually has to go through this therapy has to pay. They don't care what they have to do to get the results they want so that they're more comfortable as long as they get what they want. Okay? And if they get what they want, the money keeps coming in, doesn't it? We're going to close on that, folks. What we're learning here is a couple of things. The bamboozlement of parents in particular that begins day one from diagnosis get-go. Immediately after leaving the doctor's office, in spite of the fact that I was already an uh, adult and 18 years old, my aunt was still handed the pamphlet for ABA. My aunt has her own issues. I wouldn't call her the most knowledgeable when it comes to disability rights, but the one thing I can give her credit for is not getting me into ABA. 
her reasons were at that point I was too old for it to make any amount of difference in any way. It wasn't because she thought that ABA was a crock. She thought it was too whole. I was too old to be able to utilize any benefit from it. At least she had that going for her. You see where we're going with this, don't you? It's toted as the grand standard because they're making billions off of it. They know that at the end of the day, people like us are always going to be ostracized. They are hoping by a form of behavior modification, they can make us seem neurotypical enough to not cause the general normies out there any form of discomfort in our presence. Because it's all about everyone else. And it's never about us and what we want. And we're going to close on that, folks. We don't get very many views on this channel. The few that we do get do tend to get removed from time to time. So, folks, please don't forget to hit the like button, hit subscribe, and don't forget to hit the comments. I do appreciate your time this evening. And as always, folks, we here at Spilling Tea hope you have a good one. Bye-bye, everyone.